Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerderman, here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, it's March Madness week. Spring football is about to start. It's like, man, there's a, there's after a couple weeks of like, yeah, there's not quite enough to talk about. Now there's make, like maybe too much to talk about. So that's that's a good problem. We will we will take that as far as problems go. Yeah, I'm thinking we just break these into mini shows, 15 minute shows a day. Uh, we could call it the afternoon scoop. Mm, I, I like it. Um, you'll have to uh, you'll have to come some kind of gimmick to open the show, like a countdown or something. But uh, maybe just do a countdown to the next show. It is one day <laughs> until the next episode of this show. It's, that's a good idea. It is 23 hours and, and 45 minutes <laughs> until the next show. Uh, so yes, uh, March Madness is almost upon us. Like, does the game? When does March Madness start? Is it when the brackets are announced or when the game start? It's when the game start. And it's not the first four. The first four is garbage. No. It is nonsense that is just a make work uh, thing for crappy college ba- basketball coaches who whine about being left out of the tournament and then get fired. And it's like, well, if you didn't want to get fired, maybe you should have been one of the uh, 64 teams in the tournament. But they've decided to add four more teams because they, you know, they had some additional auto bids and stuff. And said, well, we can't take away at-large bids from Virginia Tech or Syracuse, like heaven forbid. So, so yes. So the first four is nonsense and uh, is not canon. And the tournament actually starts on the day the tournament starts when there are sixty-four teams left. And even this year starts the first round being Friday and Saturday. That's that's a little off as well. I I, I like my Thursday mm-hmm. Friday situation, but. We'll make do with this one. Ohio State gets uh, Oral Roberts, uh, the 15 2 uh, situation there. Tom, I had to, I, I filled out my Ask the Insiders uh, bracket or the bracket contest there. I was asked by Wyatt Crozier of the uh, BSB, Buckeye Sports Bulletin, for some, like, how far I have Ohio State going, who I have them losing to, uh, and like, the, the key guy for the Buckeyes and making a run. And I, I can't pick Ohio state to go to the final four. Cause it's just, you know, I, I don't want to be that Homer. Plus I know that the team has flaws. However, I, when I look at Baylor, like I think they can beat Baylor. Baylor is like, I think Ohio state is the only team bigger than Baylor. Like, or not like, yeah, yeah, Baylor is one of the only teams shorter than, than Ohio state. And I think Ohio state can take advantage of, of Baylor's size. But they they have to get there. So I was like, ah, let's just say they lose to Arkansas in the in the what the the Sweet Sixteen there and and what and you know what's a, that's a three versus a two. So you know I I just I can't for some reason like I can't take this team to the Final Four even though I see what they do against Illinois. I see what they in Michigan. They're no they're no longer in the discussion as one of the top teams in the nation. I don't. You know, I'm, I don't care what anybody <laughs> says, but I think Illinois is, and we've seen what they've. If, if EJ Liddell has a normal game against Illinois, Ohio State wins that by I don't know eight or ten, something like that, maybe. Well, if if EJ Liddell has a normal game against Illinois, Ohio State has a bigger lead that then they can blow, and then it's a close game at the end. It's so true. I mean, they it just it, everything just diverges on a you know, single position game at the end of the game. And it doesn't really matter in what order the baskets happen. It just, it'll diverge on that point. It just would have been a, the same number of baskets in a different order is, is how that works. So. You're right. I, I withdraw my comments. I, I can't help but notice that Wyatt didn't ask me to provide my predictions for the NCAA tournament. Uh, that may have something to do with the fact that I was the only, only person on the Ohio State beat to pick Ohio State to lose a football game last fall. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I have gotten uninvited by the, uh, from the party by being a, uh, by being a noted hater. <laughs> well, all you had to do was ask me, like, hey, do you know any haters? Oh, boy, do I. <laughs> Should I? Is there people I should avoid? Oh, yes, sir. Let me tell you about Tom Orr, who has the Buckeyes playing 12 games on the football field this year. Um, Yeah, so I, I don't know. I know you haven't filled out your bracket yet, but the Final Four, how... how... Yeah, I mean... I, I have a tough time seeing everything falling exactly right for this team enough times in a row because Oral Roberts seems like it shouldn't be a huge challenge. I mean, you wrote about Oral Roberts and you can go into some more detail on them, but it doesn't it doesn't seem like that should be a huge matchup issue for Ohio State. But, you know, you get into teams 
pretty pretty soon that that are like, yeah, they could give Ohio State a run. And if if the shots aren't falling, Ohio State could lose to just about anyone. If the shots are falling, Ohio State could beat just about anyone. And I mean, to your point about Baylor, there, there's very little height there. That that's the first thing I look at when I look at a team, and it's like, okay, sort roster by height, and then just start looking at how many points does this guy score. And uh, yeah, the the um, uh, Flo Thamba, who is uh, who sounds like a uh, like a yes. remix of a Sheck West song. Uh, Flo Thamba is kind of their their you know, he, he can score a little bit. Matthew Mayer can score a little bit, but there's just Mayer is, I guess, the biggest threat um, as far as taller guys on their team. But there's just there's not a whole lot. There, there are four guys who are six, nine and above. One of them uh, redshirted this year. The other one, Zach Loveday from lovely Gallopolis, Ohio, mm-hmm. in southeastern Ohio. I don't know how they how Baylor pulled him out of Gallopolis, but he has not played a whole lot this year. So it, there's that's the first thing I always look at. And it was like, okay, well, that's not a huge problem. And you look at Ken Palm and, you know, of the one seeds, the other three one seeds are in the top 10 in both offense and defense. And Baylor is third in offense and 44th in defense. It's like, okay, well, that's the one seed you would choose to get. You know, they are statistically not that dissimilar from Iowa or Ohio State. Like that's kind of the kind of the team they are. Very good scoring offense. Very, very middling defense. I mean, it, it's basically like getting Oklahoma in the uh, college football playoffs. Like, yeah, they're going to score a bunch of points, but also you can score a bunch of points. And if, you know, if Ohio State shots are falling, absolutely they could make it. I mean, they just had Bill Bender on the morning scoop this morning and he picked Ohio State to go to the final four. It's absolutely within the realm of possibility. I just, I, I don't know how much confidence you can have in this team that on any given night stuff is going to fall. I don't know who's going to beat them, but I, you know, they're not going to win the national championship. I don't think, cause I don't think they can put together six straight games like they would need to, but I don't know at what point, you know, you have that one bad game that, that then ends your season. Being on the same side of the bracket as Gonzaga, there's the thought that, you know, well, they always find a way to lose. And so maybe Ohio state, if they can get by Baylor, they're playing, you know, a four seed or a five seed to make it to the national title game, which, you know, I, so far things have fallen well for the Buckeyes in terms of who they would play. But again, you have to shoot well every night. The interesting thing about Baylor for me is you look at their, you go to their sport, their college basketball reference page, and it lists like, lists in in scoring order. And it's like six guards Mm -hmm. and then like a forward or whatever. And of course, one of the guards is one of the guards, Mm-hmm. Is six five two fifty, and he's just a you know just a, a brute that averages like seven rebounds a game or whatever. But like I, you know, I, I like the uh, possibility of EJ Liddell just controlling those guys, provided he's actually hitting the shots and the shots aren't hitting the front of the rim like they did against Illinois because of course they were tired. And that's what Chris Holtman said today. We talked to him today and was basically like, you know, we got a good day of rest yesterday. We need to continue to get good days of rest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yesterday was uh, Justice Suing's 22nd birthday, so the team celebrated by playing some Uno, um, some uh, the other another card game uh, called BS, which is you know, that, that's the way Dwayne Washington termed it, rather than giving us the uh, the actual name. And so they had some fun doing that, and kind of just getting over that Illinois loss and moving on and getting ready for this. No updates on Kyle Young. Chris Holman said he has that doesn't even know when there will be updates which is not the most encouraging thing you could hear about a guy, but they do have until Friday. Um, But he, man, two concussions in the span of a month. Like when, when that first happened, my immediate thought was he he might be done for the year just Mm -hmm. because of the, the timing and just, you don't return. Medical people don't want you returning. Now it just depends on the severity and maybe they they're being overly cautious until the tournament or maybe even till the second round mm-hmm. where they don't think they, they need him right now. So maybe they will certainly take him slowly, but maybe things aren't as dire as uh, maybe once thought. I don't know. That's that's for sure. One of the things that is inspiring me to wait as long as possible to fill out a bracket this year, because, you know, if you know, yes, Kyle Young will be back and healthy this weekend. That 
is one Ohio State team. And if you know, hey, Kyle Young is going to be out for the season or is definitely going to be out this weekend and then they're going to reevaluate him in a week, like that's a different Ohio State team. And that that's probably the ceiling on that one is a little different than than the one with Kyle Young. So I, that's that's one of the things that that is kind of has me delaying filling things out as long as possible to see if we get any more information. And, and you know, maybe that's just me being a, an eternal optimist that, you know, we'll we'll know for sure before the game. It do, that does seem a little bit like, uh, yeah, we'll we'll find out if he runs out for warm ups on, on Friday. You know, that 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 may we may not know before then. But, yeah, that that's going to have a big impact because they just they don't have the depth in the front court that they can afford to lose someone like him. And he's, you know, he's not the leading scorer on the team. He's not necessarily the, you know, the, the only rebounder they have or anything like that, but like, that just, it's just not someone you can lose. They, they, they just, they would be better off playing without one of their guards than one of their forwards, just because they just, they have so little size in the front court. So yeah, that's, that I think has to be a pretty big concern for Ohio state. And, and, you know, another reason why I think the, the error bars on this team's tournament performance are pretty big, you know, they, they could get knocked out in the second round. They could make it the national championship game, but, yeah, it's it's uh, that that's going to be something that is worth worth watching very closely the next few days. Yeah, you know this is a, a national holiday, and even though it's a little bit different, um, like one of the maybe one of the downsides to the 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 death of the newspaper, other than like friends of ours losing their jobs, is um, not having the Monday newspaper after the the announcement of the brackets because i would be sure to get the usa today whenever it was like even if we had to go into town to get it or the detroit news or the toledo blade or, or whatever whatever it and cut it out and have it on the the freezer magnets and you know you got i've got my brackets my brother's got his and then we've got the actual stuff going on and you just um uh, you know that's that's like part of spring and then when you start entering other brackets, like you're, you're studying, like, I, I am going to get this one. And then when like you lose the first game of the, of your bracket, like the first game of the tournament you, you lose, it's just, <laughs> it's so defeating. You're like, I should have seen that. Like, well, no, you, you shouldn't. And then, you know, uh, you got when, when you go like the, the first session or the first day, not even, maybe, maybe like the first afternoon and you're completely perfect. And there's just, I just want to tell everybody about it and nobody cares. Nobody wants to like, there's two things I don't care about Tom. I don't care about your fantasy team. I don't care about your bracket. And I think I speak for a lot of people when like, we like to tell people about our bracket and our fantasy team. But none of us like to hear about other, you know, like I, I'm just speaking for myself. <laughs> um, even though I asked you about your bracket, maybe there's people out, here, out there that would like it, but I don't want to hear about you doing well with your bracket. I like to hear like, yeah, I'm over four. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. I, I mean, I, we sh I shared this with you before we started recording. Uh, someone in my household won our neighborhood bracket two years ago. It was not me. It was my wife. I will let you know when I stop hearing about that. Hasn't happened yet. Almost some, one of these years, I will stop hearing about that, but not yet. Yeah. It's, uh, here, I, I have one rule in it that I'll throw in addition to yours is if you fill out multiple brackets, like different combinations of teams, you don't get to brag about your bracket. That just that's just like, well, well, I, I, I have 17 different brackets. And in, you know, in my in my crazy upset one, I'm, I'm in last place. But in my moderately conservative, but still not quite chalky bracket, I'm doing pretty well. It's like, well, OK, congratulations. There are, you know, however many combinations of teams you could possibly, you know, possibly have win. And uh, you have by hitting all of the different possible combinations, you have eventually settled on one that. OK, that's great. That's great. You can do multiple brackets. Shh, don't brag about it. No one, no one cares. That's just, that's just math. That's not you having any kind of skill at all. So yeah, I, let's, let's keep that in mind. I like the guy who's like, I think, yeah, I think I had that one. And then you have to go like mentally go through like, <laughs> like I had that upset. And I think it was, might've been the, the third bracket because the other two brackets, I had the team that lost, but I, mm -hmm. I'm only going to tell you about mm -hmm. the one that I got right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's annoying and don't do that and um but time next week i will let people know how my bracket is going oh of can't course wait. of I course can't wait. i think unless things are going poorly then we will just talk about football and i don't it's mean it's just gonna be a spring football show yeah i don't mean poorly with ohio state i mean poorly with my bracket <laughs> it's like yes ohio state they play later this week anyway tom 
Uh, Cade Stover looking pretty good <laughs> as the number three tight end. Don't you think uh, that's where we will go to that? Because, uh, yeah, if things aren't going well with my bracket, then college basketball does not exist. Or, or Tom, right away, if things go poorly, then it's like, okay, I can disassociate myself from this. I can distance myself from this. I'm no longer going to win anything. Not that I'm actually going to win anything because I've entered a pool that the company I am employed by is, is throwing. So technically, although I haven't, I haven't uh, checked with Mark and, and Kirk to see, am I eligible to win whatever that we are winning? Um, I think that I should is, be. That is a difficult ethical position. And I have chosen to remove myself from that by not entering a winning bracket. I, I mean, I could, <laughs> if I wanted to, mm. I've just chosen to, to just, rather than make Mark uh, and those guys you know, make some kind of difficult ethical decision. I'm just going to just remove that from their plates by not winning the bracket. So you're welcome. That's what I've done with the trivia contests. Mm -hmm. I always make sure to get the last one wrong. That way I don't win. Smart. That is smart. Losing trivia. I've been saying it for many, many years. <laughs> That's who the smart people are. The people who lose the trivia, because you don't want to let people know exactly how smart you are. You just want them to know, oh, that guy's pretty smart, but mm -hmm. you don't want them to know that you are the smartest person. And I have never made that mistake. No, no one has ever thought that about you. To your credit, no one has ever thought that about you. To my credit. So, um, Tom, anything else on, on uh, anything you're looking for with the with this tournament? Um, you know, I <laughs> I'm just looking <laughs> at your addition to the rundown, and I yes, have to laugh. yeah, no, it, it's. I, I think this is just. There's a little bit of this. This has a little bit of a different feeling for. Um, than, than maybe a normal year just because we went through last year and there was no tournament and okay now now there's a tournament and it's a little weird and it's a little wonky and they're not going to have full houses and there, you know there's not it was very strange to look at the region and not go oh this team got shipped out west that's going to be a problem like no that <laughs> everyone got shipped to the same place so west lafayette yes exactly so yeah it's it's uh, going to be a little it's going to be a little weird a little different but at least there's a tournament this year and you know, when that really hit me was uh, looking at the NIT bracket and Dayton's like a four seed in the NIT. And it's like this time last year, Dayton was probably going to be a number one seed in the NCAAs. Like this was their chance to win a national championship. Everything had come together for the first time in school history. And then like, nope, there's no tournament. And now, now the next year, everything's going and you're back in the NIT. Like, oh, that stinks. But yeah, there, there's there's always fun stuff. And, and you know, it, I'm really looking forward to the first uh you know, the first time there's a 12 seed or a 13 seed that's, you know, giving someone a real run. I talked to Bill Bender about, you know, some of the, you know, some of the, the uh, commonalities to the teams that can pull upsets. Those like real Cinderella upsets, the 13 over four and the 14 over three kind of upsets. Uh, that was on the morning scoop on Tuesday. That's worth listening to. Uh, he's also an Ohio U grad. So he had a lot of thoughts on the, uh, the Bobcats and their chances on Virginia against Virginia. So yeah, this is, this is going to be very different. And I mean, Virginia isn't a great example. Like, they're, they've got COVID issues right now, so it's possible that they might not be able to play and they'll just be a forfeit in the first round. So you're going to have probably some craziness, probably some wonkiness, but it is just, it's nice to have the tournament back. Yeah, Tom, um, let me tell you about my bracket because I do have some of those 12 13s. I am going to go with UCSB against Ohio in, in the second round. Is that, is that because I literally said that exact potential <laughs> second round matchup on the morning scoop this morning? Have I influenced your thinking that much? Uh, or, is boy, this, or is this you trying to, or is this you listening to me and thinking that's a way to not look too smart? <laughs> yes. I also, uh, I'm going to go with Georgetown. They're on a hot streak right now, mm -hmm. 12 seed against five. You always got to take a 12 mm -hmm. over five. And I can't get to the other side of my bracket to let you know some others, but that's, there's a whole nother show Thursday. There is. And, and I will say one of the things that I think over the years I've learned is don't pick the team that everyone thinks is going to win the championship. Pick a team that you think can win the championship, but not the one that everyone is going to pick. If 50% of America is going to pick Gonzaga, pick someone else. Because then if another if your team wins and you think they could, whether that's Illinois or Baylor or Ohio State or Iowa or whoever, if your team wins, you get a huge leg up on everyone else that that eliminates, you know, 90 something percent of the rest of the country from potentially be having a better bracket than you. So start start that. This is everyone always spends too much time thinking about the first round, not nearly enough time thinking mm -hmm. about later, figure out who you think is going to win, maybe figure out your final four and then kind of work backwards from there. And you can always change it, but focus on those big point rounds later in the, uh, later in the tournament. That is, I'm not going to tell you who to pick, 
I'm just telling you, this is this is how you need to start thinking about it. Everyone spends way too much time sweating the eight nine game that's going to give you one point, and then it's just kind of like, oh, I, I don't know. I guess, uh, oh, I don't know, like uh, that that team uh, will be the one that wins me thirty two points or doesn't. Like mm, that that's actually pretty important. You're going to want to make sure you have that one right. I like all of these tips. Are these things that your wife has taught you? <laughs> I I went back and looked. I, I knew. I remember I tweeted something about my wife and Ken Palm. Uh, two years ago, like really, really like sarcastic, like, uh, you know, oh, I have to explain Kim Palm to my wife. Oh, pray for Tom. And then two weeks later, there's like just follow up tweet. Like, yes, my wife just won the bracket, like replied in there. Like, yep. Yep. That's this is this is what I have brought upon myself. Bearing she, the lead. Yeah, no, she she takes it very seriously. Like she she has been on the Ken Palm thing for a while, uh, looking looking at at, uh, you know, identifying teams that have meet a certain statistical profile and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. It's uh, we, we take it very seriously in my house. Like there's a decent possibility I'll finish third or fourth in my house uh, just as, and then I get there. Don't you do this for a living? So, shh, shh, shh. We're totally beat you guys at football. Totally. I, I do now. I am picturing like you get a game wrong that she gets right. She's like, did you not even look at rebounding margin? <laughs> like, are you stupid? You know, they don't shoot free throws. Well, why did you think they'd be able to close this team out? What's wrong like with you, you? Yeah, exactly. Like she's chastising you for driving on a flat tire. It's like, mm. you stupid idiot. Like, <laughs> do you not look at these things? Uh, I, I do, Tom, reflect back on a year ago when this all gets shut down and there's a thought like, you know, why can't, why can't they just bubble? Why can't players bubble? Why can't college players bubble? And it's like, well, because then they are no longer necessarily college players. They become professionalized. And even you know, talk, your wife talking to my wife, she's like, "Well, why can't they bubble?" I'm like, "Well, it's it it looks bad," and she's like, "So so why can't they just bubble? Why why can't the Michigan State Spartans spark, sponsored by Rocket Mortgage bubble? Is it because of the purity of amateurism? <laughs> wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to wouldn't want to ruin the sanctity of that? Yeah, and and so then now now even the CBI is the CBI is happening." That tournament is is on. Question: Why? Yes. <laughs> I don't exactly like even why, in a normal why? year. They, they had they had a trouble filling out the NIT bracket. Everyone was like, mm, "What what if we didn't play in the NIT?" Mm -hmm. Like so so you need now you need the uh, NIT's even more broke next door neighbor. Like eh, eh, I don't I don't know if we need I don't know if we need that in a normal year, let alone this year. No, and so now Ohio State I believe uh, is just going to stay in Indianapolis because they've been there for almost a week now and we'll just stand until they lose and that's what the ncaa has recommended so they've got all of these bubbles uh you can only go certain places i'm sure the food is going to be absolutely terrible compared to what these athletes are used to when you know you've got actual chefs versus hotel you know mess producing stuff and i've already seen like some screenshots of here's a scoop of eggs here's two strips of bacon here is a <laughs> piece of toast and have at it uh, but to go from, you cannot bubble. It's just, there's, we're not even going to do that. And now, now here we are doing this. It's like, we've come a long way in a year of like, just actually like, yes, we can do some things and we can make some changes to, to enable things to continue on and to have some semblance of normalcy. But I did think today it was interesting. Dwayne Washington said like they're bubbled now and it's, like one of the coolest things he's ever been a part of. They've still been bubbled, but and then Tom, he said it reminds him of AAU. Mm -hmm. So you can't put players, these college players, in bubbles because it professionalizes them. But when you do, it reminds them of their AAU days. Um, maybe after the show we can have a conversation about the financial uh, side of AAU basketball, but uh, <laughs> might be a little closer to professional in. Uh, than college in some places just uh you know just throwing that out there speaking yeah. of tom uh, real quick do you think there's a coincidence that the fbi starts cracking down on college basketball and gosh where's where's duke where's kentucky mm. where you know mm. where are these these blue bloods that uh mm -hmm. you know where kansas are they still a three kansas is still a three but well, uh yeah. but I, that's why i said <laughs> that's why i left them out because yeah they're above arizona's, them all. yeah arizona's out yeah no no arizona no uh no Kentucky, no Duke. Like even no, North Carolina is like, like a nine. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, hmm. 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 
Mm, well, it really mm, makes you think. Does it is one of those things that makes you go hmm, as the mm. kids say. Um, I probably haven't said that in about twenty five years, though, Tom. <laughs> as the kids, when I, the kids when I was a kid say. <laughs> Uh, I interrupted you. Were you going to say something important? No, never. No. Okay, good. Then we can uh, move on from basketball talk and just touch real quickly on we are expecting to talk to Ryan Day tomorrow. So that will be interesting. Tom, I saw Arkansas is opening up a spring practice for fans. Not you know, aside from the the spring game, they are opening up a Saturday scrimmage this week. And I think that would be awesome for Ohio State to do, to, do um, to just like a, as a thank you to fans or as a, hey, like, just come on out of your houses, um, you know, come to the Ohio, come to Ohio Stadium. We will socially distance. We will just as a, like, I don't know. I don't even know. How, like spring has sprung and, mm-hmm. and there, there's reason to be uh, uh, optimistic about life again. Come mm-hmm. watch practice, come watch a scrimmage, and then the media also will get to go. Well, I think there's a, there is a certain point to it where, you know, it's always such a big deal, the spring game, that you have 100,000 people in the stadium or 90,000 people in the stadium, and that's a very big deal for the program to have all those people there. So you're very obviously not going to be able to accommodate 90, 100,000 people this year. So what if you accommodated 10,000 people on consecutive weeks mm. or 20,000 people on consecutive weeks or whatever? you know, work the logistics, however you're going to work them. But, you know, and there's, there's obviously a bunch of logistical stuff you've got to handle with that. That That's not just, it's not just as easy as throw the gates open and, uh, you know, th- you've got to do all the temperature checks and all that stuff. And you've got to have red coats and you've got to have parking people and you got to have, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that would have to go into that. But yeah, I mean, as much as Ryan Day has talked about wanting to create a game-like atmosphere for as many games as he can during the spring, that seems like a pretty good way to curate a game-like atmosphere. And, you know, I mean, this is, I think that would be probably fantastic for the players to see fans in the stands again. And it would be fantastic for the fans to get to see the team again. And, you know, you want to close AA deck. So there's no chance of any kind of, of cross contamination or whatever. Like, yeah, that's fine. But I mean, Ohio just on Tuesday morning, just announced that starting March 19th, everyone 40 and over is going to be qualified for the, uh, COVID vaccine and by March 29th, I think, mm-hmm. and everyone 16 and over will qualify for the COVID vaccine. So you're, you know, we're, we're not that far away from being able to return to more or less normal life, I think. And, you know, there are ways to do this now where I think that if you go back and look the outdoor sporting events, you know, you're, no one's talking about putting 100,000 people in the stadium, right. put 20,000 people in that stadium. You can space people out. You can you know, you you sell specific seats, you can do, you know, whatever you want to do, but just, you can, you can go in there, you can wear a mask and it'll be fine. Like if people being outdoors spaced out, make the, you know, make sure everyone wears a mask. If they say you can attend, but you have to wear a mask, don't be the more freedoms. Like, no, just if that you can, your freedom is to wear a mask or to not go like, but on the other side of that, watch, watch as I piss off people on both sides. Ready? Okay. We got, we got one side there. Ready? Stop being stupid. Like there's no reason we can't have outdoor events now. Like, come on. We, we, you know, we're, we're not all going to live inside, you know, a, a uh, panic room for the next 14 years, like until the last single person on earth is vaccinated. Like go, go do outdoor events. Like they're having, 25% capacity for the blue jackets and that's indoor. Like, okay, very clearly, very clearly you can do 25% capacity inside Ohio stadium. So, okay. We've all had our fun for the last year. Now let's start doing what we doing, what we can do, doing it responsibly, but doing what we can do. Like, and that seems very much like something we can do. Well, I would like to apologize to our listeners for uh, both sides of Tom's <laughs> argument there. I do not agree with either one of them. <laughs> So I do apologize for that. Uh, yeah, to to um, you know, just get some people out there. Let, let us, uh, you know, like you said, the, the players would like to see it. Obviously, the fans would like to see it. I just spent four days in uh, Lucas Oil. Everybody was masked up. You had ushers walking around to make sure you're only allowed to sit like four in a in a row, or not necessarily in a row, but like four together. And so they would just go around. And it's really easy to count four. And then five looks much different than four. Then you go like, hey, 
got to go. And so that's basically what they would do. And I know you say you got to, you know, you'd have to get the Redcoats there. So the Redcoats are like the Ohio National Guard. Like you call them, they are there, like at a moment's notice, like that morning, <laughs> you call them at five, we need you at six. They are there. I would imagine everyone is going to be so excited to actually go and do stuff yeah. that they're probably, and, you know, I think, you know, a lot of the concern last year was, you know, a lot of those red coats are older and, you know, in maybe more risky uh, age brackets, a lot of those folks have been able to get the vaccine already. And, you know, it, that's only going to, only going to increase as, as we kind of move along towards, uh, towards late spring. So yeah, it, this seems like something that if they are in the mood to make something happen and if they're in the mood to do something, they could absolutely do it. And it's just a matter of whether they're going to decide that they have to, you know, we, we all have to stay in our panic rooms for another three months or whether we can maybe, you know, maybe do some stuff. And, you know, I, I don't know if, I don't know if, if that's something the big 10 will decide that they need to oversee or something. Cause they, they did that last year where, you know, right now you, you can't go to an Ohio, you know, what, if there was an Ohio State baseball game this week, an Ohio State softball game this week, you, they're not selling tickets because it's just family and friends right now. Even though they can do 25% in Nationwide Arena downtown, which is indoors, not outdoors. Like, I mean, it's just, there's, there's, no, there's no consistent logic to any of this. This is just like everyone has their own like separate whatever. And it's like, seems like, seems like we should all like, there's been, there's been plenty of science at this point. Feels like we should all sort of be able to agree on the science and, and you know, what we can and can't do. But uh Somehow that's somehow that has proven elusive as, uh, uh, you know, as, as I think we've all seen uh, pretty consistently over the last year. Well, for instance, this weekend, one of the hotels I was at was within like, you know, a two minute walk of a Wendy's in Indianapolis. So, you know, there's no breakfast in the hotels anymore. So you got to go somewhere for, bre for, for breakfast. Um, but I couldn't walk to Wendy's because the lobby was closed. There's no carry out, even though, in Ohio, there is. I could walk, but I had to drive and go through the drive-through, <laughs> using up, you know, you know, putting emissions out into the world, which is also dangerous. Tom, if you would just let me walk into the counter, I could have saved those emissions for the trip home. Smart. Yeah, it, it's. It does. It seems like we're we're very close to having a resolution on all of this stuff, and everyone's just afraid to be the first one to take the next step like well let the sec do it right exactly well i i think the sec the sec has been doing it for nine months now so i think i think that ship has sailed but like i've been saying you know i just it, it's time to start making difficult decisions rather than just going with the easier decision of yeah let's just uh table a uh, uh, table a decision and we'll we'll start thinking about attendance later on let's not do it now now is not the time let's let's wait until there's actual attendance to be had and so hopefully some difficult decisions and difficult conversations start happening and, and they try to find ways to it's not even finding ways it's let's start doing this mm -hmm. and hopefully they will tom uh before we go this is something that showed up on our ask the insiders message board from uh one of our newest contributors dominic smith who is down in florida and will cover recruiting for us he asked who is the best buckeye football player ever from florida and i'll tell you my thought process immediately went to santonio holmes mm -hmm. And then uh, Chris Gamble. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, the Boses. The Boses, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the four for me. And then I thought, well, if Nick Bosa would have been healthy his entire career, I think he would have been the one. Mm -hmm. Joey Bosa was healthy and was a monster as a freshman, as a sophomore, dipped as a junior because you know, look, he was getting triple teamed. teamed yes, right. <laughs> But I will always have a special place in my heart and mind for San Antonio because of how good he was. Like, just imagine what he would do in Ryan Day's offense. It would be freaking ridiculous. But, and Chris Gamble, what he did will never be done again. I, I can't, I can't, I, I don't think I can go against Joey Bosa. Where are you? Yeah, I, and I kind of, I went through the exact same progression that you did. And it's like, well... Chris Gamble is probably the best athlete of those four. Santonio Holmes probably had, I mean, Santonio Holmes is a Super Bowl MVP. And, you know, like you said, like take those 2005 wide receivers and put them on this Ohio State team. Like you think Ted Ginn and Santonio Holmes might do some things in a Ryan Day offense? Like yeah, maybe might, might be okay. Might make some plays. Yeah. I, Nick Bosa, Nick Bosa is a little bit of a what if, and you know, you can, 
if you want to fall down the what if rabbit hole, there's Torrance Gibson and that kind of stuff, which is like, you know, ne- never got to step on the field, but like, mm, could have been. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I think I am going to go with Chris Gamble just because, I mean, literally no one has done the things that he did where he was, you know, a very good wide receiver. Again, like, let's see what a Chris Gamble does in a yeah. Brian Day offense. But then also, was so good at corner, just like such a freaky athlete. He's like, oh, and now I'm going to play corner and uh, be a first round draft pick. And uh, also, I think he had a kick return for a touchdown against Cincinnati in 2002. Like he was a, I mean, like a true uh, BJ Mullins triple threat, like boom, all three, all three phases of the game. And I, I think you could make a decent argument for him just in terms of on field impact like none of them contributed to an ohio state national championship quite as much as chris gamble did like that that was literally the difference between them winning and not winning that national championship 2002 like they needed another quarter they probably don't beat penn state without chris gamble you know did they beat cincinnati i think kickoff he, he, return might have gotten called back on a penalty against well, cincinnati he, he had the game clinching interception against cincinnati too yeah he did yeah in the end zone yeah which I think yeah, was the I mean, first time I noticed he was actually playing defense. Yeah. <laughs> what is Chris Gamble doing out there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. I mean, 12 he, guys on the field. This is yeah. terrible. No, he, he, he might be the guy who saved that season. I mean, yeah. there were a bunch of people who saved that season. Cause again, when you're, when you have an entire football season, that's like the last week of Ohio state basketball, it turns out you need a lot of heroes, <laughs> but Chris Gamble was the hero in a bunch of those, a bunch of those games. So just based on athleticism and on field impact, I guess I'll go with him. But I mean, I, like I said, I went through the exact same four per- person like progression as you did. Like, man, Santonio Holmes. Oh, but what about Chris? Kim- oh man, the Bosa's. Like, yeah, okay. Turns out Ohio State's pulled a bunch of good, bunch of good, good talent out of Florida. And uh, speaking of Dominique Smith and pulling talent out of Florida, I'm going to have Dominique Smith on the morning scoop for Wednesday, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Florida recruiting and how that state shakes out, and you know what parts of the state are. Florida strongholds versus Miami strongholds versus Florida straight strongholds. And, and, you know, Ohio state may being able to capitalize on things. Well, those three programs are a little bit down and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be on the morning scoop on Wednesday. That's a pretty dynamite. I just, I just led you right into that. You and sure that did. Not, that was not part of the plan. Nothing is ever planned. No, everyone knows that by now, but I do think Tom, and I know how you love Mount Rushmore's. I think that's a pretty easy Mount Rushmore mm-hmm. of Ohio state from Florida players, but I think you're right. Like Chris Gamble is the only legend of those four. I think he's a Buckeye legend. And while the others are Buckeye greats, there's, you know, there's a hierarchy. And mm-hmm. I think what he did was legendary and will live on forever. I mean, right now we're already talking about Chase Young has bypassed the Boses. Nobody's ever going to bypass what Chris Gamble did. So I would agree with you there. But I still think I, I, as the greatest player of uh, Joey Bosa, as the, the Florida legend, I, I can certainly uh, agree with you on uh, Chris Gamble. I guess we just needed to ver- clarify, uh, you know, what I was asking, and so uh, I will accept your answer, even though he was not better than Joey Bosa. Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of these like, how do we want to define this? Because yeah. depending on how you want to define this, you're going to come up with different answers. So, and other people out there are like, no, he was better than Joey Bosa because he was a shutdown corner. Look what he did to Andre Johnson in the mm-hmm. championship game. So. Yeah, and and. It, it, as we're having this conversation, I'm like, I'm just terrified that we're going to have forgotten someone from like the early nineties. Like, how Archie you- Griffin was from Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't, like I don't yeah, Tam yeah. Hopkins, Steve Belisari, Greg Belisari. Yeah. I, I had this like brief flash of uh, like, was, it, was Antoine Winfield? No, nope. no. Like it just going through, going yeah. through corners from the nineties. Yeah. Sean Springs was in Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we've yeah. landed on the correct answer. Good for us. I, Per usual, mm-hmm, obviously, it took us a while to get there, but yes, obviously. So, anything else, Tom? Before we get out of here, no, I think we're I think we're good, and we'll have uh, a whole bunch more to talk about on Thursday yes. as we get closer to the start of spring football, and again, more basketball. I mean, this is this is a very exciting time. And Tuesday night, the Ohio State women's hockey team starts its NCAA tournament run. They play Boston College for a spot in the Frozen Four on Tuesday night. So, want want to keep an eye on that one as well. We will certainly do that. Uh, just a reminder, if you're not yet a member at uh, BuckeyeScoop.com, check it out. I promise you, you will find it worth your while, especially right now as spring ball is getting started. There's going to be so much information coming out of, uh, of things. We don't get to see practices, but we have sources who do. So there will be some uh, 
some interesting stuff coming out of that that you would want to receive first, certainly. So thank you all for listening. Thank you guys for watching, and we will talk to you on Thursday.